how is it going? It is Fakeo coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. And today I've got a more standard deck to share with you guys. That's going to be Indoor Spiders. It's a, only a little bit revamped with a couple of new cards, but the deck is still generally the same and is still quite competitive. It might not be an S tier ranking deck right now, but still strong enough to take the ladder. And if it's a deck that you are comfortable with, I recommend you go ahead and play it and you'll be able to win some games. So let's go take a look at the deck. But before we jump across, I would just like to add, if you have time during this video and you are enjoying it, please leave a like. It makes a huge difference to the performance of the video and what I make in the future. Thank you. So here we are, right? So first of all, um, if you are familiar with the deck, let's just jump to the cards that I've added so you know just what we're looking at. I've added Blight Caretaker, the ability to kill uh, your cheap spiders to make challenging saplings can help when you're on the offense. And on the defense, in a dire situation, it could be great for uh, stopping your opponent from essentially attacking or at least being able to trade into them and setting up withering whales and stuff like that. Other than that, just pretty much it buffs in Dua because we are getting more tokens. It's three out of one body, which is pretty amazing. Also, uh, I do recommend you try and use this in the offensive as much as you can, especially it helps uh, against mid-range decks like Bannerman, where you can set up your saplings to maybe get a nice withering whale here and there. Uh, the other new card that we will be featuring, which is more honestly of a flavor card, is just one copy of Snapvine. In situations against certain decks, it can kind of give you productive moves to make and force some a pretty expensive removal from your opponent because they might not know what you're doing. Definitely a cuttable card. This is just not necessary. If you want to change it, I would recommend just pretty much going for like maybe a Grass of the Undying or Withering Whale. So let's go from bottom to top for the newer players so they understand exactly what we're looking at. So this is an Endure deck. Your main focus and all around build card is They Who Endure. This is essentially just a token deck that looks to kind of stall out, get to Endure, play him on the field, attack him in the face is one option, but another interesting combo to make is playing it alongside Astrocity. So you'll kill an ally to deal its damage equal to its power to anything. Of course, there's certain ways to play the matchup and it's not as straightforward as just slamming Endure down and hitting the Astrocity. You have to buy enough time to get him buffed to a certain point where it becomes relevant. Sometimes you need it to be a 20-20 if you haven't barely touched your opponent, but most of the time you'll be actually quite competitive in dealing some damage with a whole bunch of tokens uh, which when I say tokens I mean like running a spider package it's, it's very like uh, spread the board whitey okay that's a whitey that's a bad word okay top end ruination pretty much because we are a bit of a, a bit of a stole deck and shadow isles does get away with ruination if the deck is built around being able to support it because we're kind of slow and we do have like the grass we undying withering whales and tons of spiders you'll tend to be able to buy enough time to get the ruination uh if you're playing this quick tip if you're playing a shadow isles deck that doesn't have these kind of options ruination is kind of slow so be careful putting too many of them into your deck it's not as powerful as you might think uh, Trindamir becomes relevant because we run Thresh. Trindamir is a, uh, another option that is not is necessary, but you can uh, tend to find tons of value from Thresh. And Thresh, Thresh does find tons of value in this deck because of all the spiders. We also run uh, Elise as our other champion card. Okay, obviously creating tokens and lots of generation helps a lot and stalling out the board. It's You can think of it more like this deck kind of has like all the aggressive tools to, but usually your board's gonna get blown up anyway, so Indu is your alternate win condition. We talked about Snapvine already, so we'll move on from that. We've already talked about Endure, Astrocity, uh, Withering Whale, the, the between Withering Whale and Grass of the Undying, these are like your kind of sustainable tools and removal. Now, uh, this is still needs to be tweaked, but this could change. It depends on when the meta settles what this looks like. But at the moment, it's just one Grass of the Undying in my list and two Withering Whales. This might swap and shift I think maybe that Grassley Undying may need to be a two card, but for now, we'll see how we go. Grassley Undying finds a, lot, finds a lot of value against Burn Aggro being able to deal with their Dravens or like their Jinx as well if they're running that version. So this card's definitely relevant. Uh, so is Withering Whale though. Withering Whale does tend to find quite a bit more value because we are able to set up lots of trades with our tokens. So Withering Whale is pretty like great as a two of for sure. I wouldn't change that. This could even be a three of depending on what the meta looks like. Uh, Broad Awakening, pretty self-explanatory. You're running Spiders, you're running Broad Awakening, Fire Mana, make blockers or make offensive attackers. Uh, Wraith Caller, because we are mostly Shadow Wiles. At the moment, Wraith Caller is probably one of the more outdated cards in this deck. This may change sometime in the future, depending on what the meta looks like, but in general, 
Heavy Shadow Isles deck, Allegiance, Summons a Mist Wraith, that's two bodies for one. And if you're on the offensive, sometimes it'll find more value than just making tokens. Uh, Frenzy Skitterer, this is another card that can either be a three of or a no of, because this card has probably been looked at as one of the cuttable cards as well. But I say cuttable, I mean, we're not going to cut them, but if you want to try and experiment with the deck, I can recommend you can look at Frenzy Skitterer first. But the ability to negate aggression from your opponent is very helpful with this card. Uh, it's weak because it does get pinged off by stuff now that it is at 2 HP, uh, but you could also play on the offensive too with a bunch of spiders. It depends how you want to play the matchup. But, Friday Claytaker, we're not going to overlook this, we will talk about this a little bit more because this card is low key quite powerful in so many ways. But as I stated earlier, I think the ability to play on the offensive makes this card a lot better. So every time you do seem to have another play you can make on the defensive, I highly recommend you try and play this card on the attack token because you're going to find a lot more value from the saplings that way because they are ephemeral okay so that's quite important to understand but they do have challenger so just being able to kind of like pull in your opponent's minions and set them up for possible withering whales makes it kind of powerful or even just straight up killing their board and uh, not to be overlooked this card's low-key fun and uh quite powerful we'll see how the meta goes though like this could even be a three of honestly taking out maybe a skitterer but we'll just keep it a two, a two and two because maybe having three of these in one hand is kind of awkward and clunky. Bar Feast is straight up just a flexible card. The power of this really comes down to the fact that, I'll give you a straight up example, if they play like a two mana, two two or two three, you can pretty much like just like Vile Feast it as one option, set up, sets up a blocker to trade into it. It's actually quite insane. It deals with one HP very effectively while providing tempo. It's just a crazy card that can be so flexible in so many situations. And the ability to like, as I said, if they have a two HP minion, this almost just deals with it. It's just, it's just a straight up great card. And we need three of this card. I can't, if you know Vile Feast, you know Vile Feast. It's a great card. Uh, Miss Wraith. Uh, two mana, two two. Like we're already running the wraith caller. This does get buffed. It's kind of relevant, as I was stating earlier with wraith caller. These are possible changes in the future, but for now, this is pretty standard. So we'll keep it standard. It's a decent uh unit to play on turn two. Uh, Glimpse beyond pretty much just card draw. It finds a lot of value when your opponents are playing spells. By now, if you know Glimpse Beyond, you know Glimpse Beyond. But for those that might not be as aware of the power of this card, it pretty much denies your opponent any value from them using spells to clear your minions or any effects at all, really. And if you're in dire situations, it's pretty much a draw too. We do run plenty of spiders. Uh, Lease is a three of, this is pretty self explanatory. Uh, the ability to flip a lease is kind of great too, so it oftentimes can happen, which can buy you a lot of time or sometimes just kill your opponent before we even make it to Endure. A hapless aristocrat, two bodies in one, kind of fits the Endure theme as well as the spider theme. This card is, is all around really great, so I think it's definitely a fine three of, and hopefully we find it on turn one most of the time. Crawling Sensation, uh, we have three copies of it just for buffing up the Endure. I like three copies of it because we are running Blighted Caretaker as well, but oftentimes you might see this be more of a one of or a two of, depending on what other cards we want to feature. But for now, we'll keep it pretty simple. Three Quality Sensations does find value against aggressive decks as well. It buys you a ton of time to get to the key cards that you need. So that's the finalization of the list. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please leave a comment and I will respond to them immediately. Enjoy the games here, guys, and you have yourselves a fantastic day. Okay, plunder. Fortunately, I'm not too familiar with these decks yet. I haven't done my proper research, but I still think that Endure Spires all around should just be quite favored against most matchups. By favored, I mean have a 50 50. In terms of if we play the game and things turn out the way we want them to, then we should be fine. Early game cards. So I think he wants to try and get plenty of plunder effects against me. So if I keep a bunch of cheap cards to block, it should work out. I imagine he may be running some pretty cheesy cards. We're talking about like those one mana stealth units. Which I can't deal with, but because we're on the attacking odds, that's actually great for us. It means that if anything with elusive comes down, we can um file feast it. Um there's reasons for trading, swinging. There's also reasons not to. 
If now there's no reason to. The reason would be to just bring him down to closer to Vile Fist range in case he blocks. That's kind of unlikely. Unlikely. Okay, we block here. We don't want him to plunder. Or deal damage to our Nexus. So if I Vile Feast... Uh, he can't plunder anyway. What am I talking about? This card's kind of like, um... Not what I thought. Plunder's pretty much like a battle cry. That's when it's played. So this Vile Feast should work most of the time, unless he wants to save it. I don't know why he'd want to. I think that's kind of trolly. Um, okay. Miss Wraith, I think we can, I'm pretty sure we just play stuff. Turn three. I don't think he has many productive plays to do at all, right? Unfortunately, neither would do we though. That's kind of a problem. Ordering doesn't matter. But usually attacking with the biggest thing first is usually most of the time pretty safe. How to kick? Don't know much, do you? Mm. Aristocrats to play. Done it. So we don't block with the aristocrat. Brittle steel. Okay. We just chill. Because the keg's on the field. Actually, it doesn't really matter too much. I think we play thrash here. I'm actually going to rip that keg with Thresh to keep him safe from any forms of damage. I feel okay swinging now. I can imagine that he would block, take a value block here. And then play some sort of spell with this a uh, AoE. I haven't remembered the names of all the cards yet, but... It's a pretty predictable play, take a value block. Mm, okay. wonder why he'd do this. To maintain this on 2 HP outside of Vile Feast range. Because I mean, it's another unit that's dying though. Clear off. Now it ends up the same. What the fuck? Okay. I honestly couldn't have ever predicted a play like that. I think that's quite possibly one of the most trolly things I've seen. But it's actually kind of petrifying at the same time because... I can't do, it can't, it, what? I think can't attack. I shouldn't be scared of it at all. What the hell? What am I talking about? Why, why the fuck would you buff that? Just to get rid of Thresh? That's incredibly trolly. That's such an expensive resource. Hmm. Overwhelm, hey? I'll take I'll take some damage for now. Where are you? Got a surprise for him. I mean, sure. I get to keep this unit alive. He's putting damage onto. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see if we can go another turn here. I can actually kill my own spider off. This is hilarious. Because I want to kill him and then play Snapvine. Yeet. Because now our spider's dead, I can play Crawling Sensation. I don't exactly know if he has an answer to actually clear this. Yep. Now we're in a spot where we have to like eventually let these snap vines die. 
Got the one copy of Grasp in the deck. That might need to be tweaked soon. We have the Astrocity and a Duo, which is like helpful, finally. I think we may be drawing poorly recently. Stand and fight. Hello. Okay. What do I do here? Maybe I just withering whale? No. What did he use then? Brittle Steel. So Harsh Winds is still a card. This is only a 12-12. I think we can just chill for a bit longer. I'll just press OK. Hmm. I, sh I should Withering Whale. It's also going to deal two damage, isn't it? This card's so weird. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. That card's insane. <sighs> hmm. Okay, so just play Endor and hope for the best here. I rarely forget and never yep. forgive. It's the boss! Your apex. So he never takes us, so he frostbites it early. I'm attacking on purpose. That was very strange. Don't ask where it's from. If he tanks, if he tanked fucking 15 damage and has a frostbite card, that's real fucking heads up. Because he played this match really well if he did that. I don't, I'm not sure how much of a difference it would have really made. So even if um, he frostbited it prematurely, it, it might have made a difference actually. Because coming back into our turn, he could uh, frostbite it if we tried to. Astrocity at the next turn, but I don't think you ever tank 15 damage. No, that's not true actually. Now that I think about it, like, like if he's familiar with the duo of spiders, then he's familiar that like there's not many answers. And like he's coming back into his turn, so he has like the attack token priority. Okay, so reversing what I'd have to assume would be a War Mother Control, which on paper we should be winning this. Uh, the problem is they have access to the frostbite cards which can stop atrocity from finding any value as always the hands always tend to look the same i don't think vile feast finds as much value in this matchup as they tend not to run spiders from what i've seen most of the time have been versus the world mother control for a while though a uh, glimpse beyond a considerable keep but we'll just look for a curve glimpse beyond's a card draw for when they try and make a productive play against our minions so up until then, hopefully we draw into it. It's a card I much prefer not to keep off the mulligan because you hate to find multiples of them sometimes. Uh, obviously, most of the time you're going to play at least on curve. I can't think of many, many considerations for not playing it. So you're safe to usually do it most of the time. I wouldn't overthink it too much. Uh, this is pretty much an open attack. Most matchups when you're playing in Jewel Spiders, it's not going to be about uh, how much damage you do to them with your minions. It's more about sustaining. Uh, against aggro decks, so you could be trying to fight for the board quite heavily with your spiders, so that becomes quite relevant. We'll just play one Aristocrat and float three mana. This warding stones could actually become a bit of a problem. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a way to really do anything about it on this turn. We'll see if we can get some spiders down and maybe flip our Elise. It's quite unlikely though that it happens. Okay, let's open some options for me now. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see him um, just end the turn if I pass it back to him. 
He probably wants to attack though. I can't think of a situation why he would not attack with the 5-5. Five five. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking about, I need to get the spiders on the field so I can flip. So I'll play Miss Wraith, I think. This might bait him into not attacking now. I'm not sure how much I should actually be concerned about the uh, Warding Stone finding him mana. Hmm. Weird. We're not gonna flip please. That's fine. We're just gonna open attack here. So, the f lives in a weird position. I would expect to see Glacial wins. I believe the card's called. Six mana, Frostbite, two cards. Turn's still pretty obvious, so it's open attack. I guess a deck that can interact with the board or promote minions that can block your value attacks. Then yeah, we should just open attack, especially with how heavy this board is already. Plus, at least tends to bring another spider along. So that fills up your board anyway. This is our homeland. So he goes for the block on Elise. Then we po possibly see a Glacial wins here on these two. Grass with the Undying. It's probably one of the more weaker plays. Uh, nothing that can really be done here. Okay, so I'm gonna play Elise here. I'm expecting him that he's gonna Vile Feast this one. That's like what may have been his play. So maybe I shouldn't have played Elise. I kind of want a Vile Feast here. So the most logical Vile Feast would be to do this. Because he could actually counteract my Vile Feast with his own Vile Feast, which I was cons convinced that's what he was trying to do. But at least now I know that. Unless he vile feasts it, nah, I should get the at least flipped. We must all I'm not really entirely sure how important that is. But we'll see. Let me change into something more comfortable. So he's at X amount of mana where I wonder if it's even worth bothering about the warding stones. Okay. Maybe just skitter. Skidora can block into the Hearth God and puts this to zero attack. Our banner will lead the way. It's a pretty weird attack, but it could be because he has some sort of answer here. He doesn't really I'm not sure if he like has to be productive here. But not doing anything is kinda of slow. Weird. Um. Sorry, this turn's kind of interesting. There's a couple of options he has coming up. He has a Ruination coming up and he has a Nivea. I, must get out of here. I think we're just open attacking and clearing this board and at least forcing some sort of uh, Ruination. And I'm actually going to get rid of the Warding Stones just so he's to turn further away from flipping a Nivea. 
Which might be actually kind of relevant. Okay. Give me his water stones alive. It's quite possible that Anivia is coming down next turn. I guess we play broad. And at this point, we're just going to look for the 2020 Endure. We'll float, hold on to the Vile Feast for now. I'm pretty sure Anivia is coming down. Okay, Ledros. Interesting. That kind of changes things. That changes things a little bit. And we found Thresh. I wasn't actually expecting Ledros to come down. Hmm. I think that's fearsome too. That's a problem. I guess Thresh has to become a blocker for us. And then we're going to hope to find Astrocity next turn. Okay. Now, if he's smart, he should swing with uh, Lidros first. It'd be a mistake just to swing like that, for example. That's a mistake. See what he did here? It's pretty important to understand that attack order sometimes does matter. And against Lidros, it does. Not that, like, it entirely will matter in the long run. But it just means that we get to level up Thresh. Which is kind of relevant sometimes. So you watch this. I'll give him that emote so he understands that that was a mistake that he did. Okay, so if I play Caretaker... We don't play Caretaker. This means that we can't Astrocity immediately next turn, which is kind of relevant. Because if we don't, then the Lidros could kill us, because we haven't exactly got that many... um ...stuff. Everyone's a garden. I think I do this and I hope that I find Astrocity next turn. Because we're running out of time. Hmm. It's kind of shitty, but this could buy us some time. I have one copy of Snap Vine for interesting reasons like this. Just as a bit of a kicker. I don't mind it. Let's actually produce it. The problem is we have to be careful uh, once we play Snap Vine because it's quite hard to get the Endure out afterwards. I guess we're looking for the top decks of uh, Endure or Astrocity. If I put down Endure onto the field, it's pretty obvious that he just plays Ruinate. So I think we should go Snap Vine first. See if this baits some removal. I smell a fight. It's a bit of a problem. Vile Feast. Probably the Darius, uh, Trindomir. I wonder if that's correct. Okay. We can't actually swing. We can swing with these two. Follows. This actually, like, I doubt he blocks this, but it gets Endure up. If he doesn't block it, it also gets him down there. Yeah, that also works too. Maybe I should have swung with a 2 1. I don't know if it's really gonna matter. Live to fight. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. I'll be quite disappointed if he's running his atrocity. Not just flesh, rage incarnate. Okay, that's fair enough. Maybe we were supposed to play to uh, endure. That deck list I wasn't entirely sure about. It seemed like what I thought was a warm mother control. But he's running like Battle Fury and Trinimia. Which is also in warm mother control, but I don't understand like I didn't I didn't I didn't like bump into any harsh winds. I didn't bump into any frostbites. I didn't even see Avalanche. Hmm, that was a bit unlucky. Alright, so we're up against the Draven and Vi. In terms of Mulligan, I'm just gonna look for whatever reductive cards I can find. Really. Uh, I think uh, holding Broad and Withering might be a bit slow, but they could come in handy for clearing minions. But because I don't know what the deck is, I'll just find the most productive hand I can get. Keeping Wraith Caller might be okay. Uh, turns out it wasn't okay. <laughs> I think I was trying to hope for, to find something on curve. If I had found a 3 drop there, I would have been pretty happy. Just to go 2, 3, and 4. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. We did find the 3 drop, so that's okay. Now uh, we're pretty much just going to play on curve. I know what lurks in the shadow. Yeah, it's fun. You guys gotta play into the removal sometimes. Okay, I guess we still have to play Skidra. It's kind of uh, a bit awkward. But I can't just pass. He may, he may just pass the turn completely. Yeah, okay. We don't play this. We'll float the mana for Broad Awakening. The only reaction here is pretty good because we can decide with between Wraith Caller or Broad Awakening. Wraith is usually just fine. Okay, so he's got four mana. Static Shock's a card that he hasn't played yet. Chances are he'll have it. So maybe Wraith Caller is better for now. Lots of floats one mana for crawling sensation if he uses like a get excited or something. We missed our allegiance buff. <laughs> I seem to have a knack for doing these kind of things. So we're drawing for Jord, we're drawing in Dua, most likely. Okay, that puts us on the back foot now. I think the next Wraith Call is just fine. I'll hold back the broad for now. Because if he kills something, I'll be able to use Crawling Sensation and maybe find a little bit more value from Broad Awakening. Which for now is fine. We can play the value game. It's done. Okay. We still just swing. This is okay. We can do this. Could have floated, but um, I'd rather play it before, prior to the Broad Awakening, which is most likely going to be one of the plays next turn. Chance to buff the spiders. Finally. Double damage to the Nexus. Okay, I'll pass for now. Could be given an elusive. Pretty sure Piltover has uh, access to elusive cards. Okay. I think I'm actually okay doing Astrocity against this. I'm very okay with this. So use the Wraith Caller just in case he has a, um... Well, I wouldn't really know what he needs. <laughs> okay, he was obviously playing some fun. We have two copies of Astrocity in our deck as well, so, uh... Being able to f use one flexibly like that can sometimes win games. And being able to draw into it, draw into it more consistently can also win games. I find two atrocities to be great. Um, many lists will use one. I just go for two, especially in a ladder environment where you just kind of end games more consistently. Okay, we've seen this deck, Demacia Tempo. Something along those lines, maybe a couple of card tweaks, but in general, this is pretty much just a mid-range. Misfortune uh, is really good against spiders though. I think the hand still looks the same, keeps some sort of curve. 
I'll keep the Wraith Call, I'll throw back the Astrocity and Broad Awakening. I don't think we ever keep Astrocity in the opening hand, especially when we run two copies. In the one copy deck, right, might be different. Sith mm. 3 opener. This is quite strong. Uh, finding a least pretty much makes the turn pretty simple. I considered a uh, fleeting mana to play broad next turn. But that made me too slow. Okay. If we swing, we grant him value. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, normally, if there wasn't a barrier turn, you'd still swing, even if this traded into you. Uh, with the barrier, I made things a bit different. So we can actually bar feast here. It stops the 3-2 three, uh, three, from attacking completely. He probably just swings with the 4-4 four, uh, four, four this turn. The loyal Badger. Badger Bear. Okay, that's kind of weird. I wouldn't have swung there. I don't think he really has... Oh, he has ways of actually dealing one. He's rocking the misfortune, but outside of that, there's no real way to deal with this. Uh, we'll float. I don't know if one of our faces. It was pretty obvious play, but I'll leave it for now. I think I'd rather play Broad Awakening and then pass. Okay, I wasn't going to swing anyway, so that's fine. His Bannerman suddenly gets pretty strong. Oh, we have Withering Whale. So if he plays the Bannerman, he can still rock the tough card afterwards, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, if he slow plays here, the Skidder is actually a pretty insane find. But we might even consider doing it next turn. So we actually have to ping that. Um, I need to deal with this card, and if I withering whale, there's a way it might survive. Okay. This should guarantee that it can't be cleared up. Also might make him think I have a weird hand. This is probably too um, forehead, big brain, but that pretty much gets to swing into my Elise, which I don't want to happen. I'm fine to block this. Okay. Protect and strike. The tough. Just gonna play around tough here. I can go down to 8. Well, I should probably get him to use it now, while I'm considering not actually multiple blocking. I think this is the play. He's 100% playing some sort of buff card here. I might be overthinking it too much, but I know this deck runs the uh, AoE tough card, which is pretty much like the main card I want to play around for now. You choose the cards to play around. I won't play around everything. This puts him in a weird spot. Okay, so maybe he didn't. Maybe he does have a tough card, but he played Radiant Strike, so I probably should have blocked here. But he could have played both. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's any reason to develop or swing. I think what the, I'm better off doing is playing Vile Feast. I wouldn't be surprised to see. Oh, okay, that's going down. Very interesting. Now I guess it's a develop. I'll probably go for a Skidder play here. Soldier, to me. Okay. 
I wonder if I should take my chances at killing Sithril. Hmm. This is a bit weird. Okay, for him to keep Sithril alive, he needs another Radiant Strike. Or AoE tough. Again, I'm going to continue to play. We already saw the Radiant Strike. Chances are there might not be another one. AoE tough cards are a thing. I guess we'll swing like this, actually. It doesn't matter. But we probably want to swing in. I could definitely like not swing with these two. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. So either he chose to let the Sithria go down, or he has no AoE tough. I wonder if he'd actually choose to let it go down. With a hand like that, I don't think he would. It's kind of weird. Skitter is fine here. You can still flex him with the Ring Whale. It's Fortune. Well, now let's attack deal one damage, uh, one to battling enemies and one to the Nexus. Okay. This fight looks okay here. Again, we have a knack for not hitting our allegiance buffs. I don't know what it is. I like running four fucking fragile cards. So this block's kind of just to negate three damage. Mm. Okay, I'll leave it as a three one. I actually don't mind that it is it gets pretty much free block. I'd rather block these two. I don't think she'll even swing. He'll even swing here. Okay, I'll take three. I'll take that. That's fine. So we could play Endure. I think Prindami is slightly better here. Fleetwood Tracker. Okay. So we're just going to do this. Uh, probably see the Grizzled Ranger block here. This tanks it. Makes sense. Beamer. Ajibe. His board's like looking pretty scary. Okay, that's a blowout. All right, so we do have this astrocity in hand, but the withering whale accomplishes almost nothing. So this astrocity is going into one of the minions. Let's just see how we line this up. I guess I have to do like a Withering Whale play here. We have the mana for Astrocity plus Withering Whale. It looks something like this, I'm pretty sure.
blow too. Just bump us into here. We're on three. And we were doing well. At least if he has a tough card. Like I'm hoping he hasn't got the tough card because these are some pretty insane blocks. Mm, maybe I'm not supposed to block this one. It's gonna rally though. I don't think it does. This just makes the most amount of sense I can think of. We do survive to a tough AoE tough card, but um, we kind of get knocked out by um, the damage that goes to our face and our trades that we're doing well. It looks like things are working out pretty well. I'm just not sure if the uh, Badger Bear gets to attack again. Because that could lose us the game. I don't think so though, right? This one shouldn't be able to attack. Because he already swung with his minions. Uh, we can end the game with uh, Endure. I'm trying to think of anything that might beat us here. I don't think there's any card that beats us. Maybe a Rally. If he rallies, I can actually play the Caretaker. This Caretaker is actually a pretty insane top deck right about now. Okay, this game should be pretty over. I don't know if I want to add it up. I'm just doing this for safety reasons, just buffing the Endure. I really don't think it matters once I drop this, he'll probably surrender. Yeah, okay. Very nice. Um, maybe he's not running the uh, AoE tough card, because I feel like that would have been super strong at some point that he hadn't drawn it. But fortunately enough for us, we played, we played around it and then chose not to play around it. That was just the main card I was worried about. There's lots of Shadow Isles removal um, gets bummed out by it quite a lot. GG.